this is the battle of center channel speakers. In this battle of center channel speakers, we will compare speakers from low budget, which is the Yamo, all the way to the SVS Ultra Center. I have prepared a detailed presentation here because that way you can refer to the tables and screenshots and pictures to get an idea of the specifications, the capabilities and the differences between all these speakers. So feel free to refer the presentation as we go along. And also if you are interested in detailed review and unboxing of any of these speakers, I'll link them at the end of the video. There's an entire playlist. So I'm thinking that you might want to take a look and start with the grill off all these speakers right so let's start and take the grill off because that way we can take a look at the drivers so give me a minute i'll take the grill off the yamo's grill fortunately comes off very easily it's magnetic so it is as simple as that and here is the yamo's grill magnetic i love that cheapest speaker but one of the best grills in this entire lineup and now the svs prime center this grill is not bad compared to the ultra center i'll tell you why this is not magnetic it just goes into these bumpers not super easy to come off but well it came off and it is not bad compared to the ultra center's grill as you can see here it has these bumpers that go in the grill is decent there is no warp it might be a little bit of a bend here but overall good quality for the SVS Prime Center. I hate the grill of the SVS Ultra Center. When you look at my detailed review of the Ultra Center, you will know why. This has a little bit of a warp. It's a bow shape here because there are no bumpers right in the middle here. There are only at the ends. And for the price of the SVS Ultra Center, this is not a great quality grill. To make this video quick and easy, I'm going to skip taking the grill of the JBL. If you are interested in seeing that speaker without the grill, take a look at the dedicated video of unboxing the JBL. I'll link it at the end of this video and in the description. So let's get started. What do we have today in the great battle of cell channel speakers? Number one here, I have the Yamo. It is an S81 model and under it, I have the JBL 520C or the JBL 520CBK. And this is the very popular SVS Prime Center. And finally, we have the SVS Ultra Center, which is a very popular speaker as well, but in the higher range of the price. Now let's look at the presentation. In this first slide, I have the center channel comparison in terms of quick specifications. In this section, we're gonna just look at the specifications real quick so you get an idea of what these speakers are about. So for the Yamo S81, the main woofer is four inch polyfiber. The tweeter is one inch soft dome. And this is a two way design, which is why the mid range has that animated X, which means there is no dedicated mid range driver. The frequency response is 71 Hertz to 26 kilohertz. So my friends, that is the Yamo S81, the smallest of the drivers in this comparison, but also the cheapest. So the JBL 520C, it has four inch polyplast cone and that biradial horn. It is only one inch, but that biradial horn is amazing. And I'll tell you why, it can play pretty great sounds. By the way, this also does not have a mid range because the JBL is also a two way design. And two way designs means it does not have a specific dedicated driver to play the mid-range frequencies that load or that work is shared between the tweeter and the two main drivers on either side the jbl's frequency response is 60 hertz to 40 kilohertz and now the svs prime center five and a quarter inch polypropylene main drivers as you can see these two drivers here five and a quarter inch it has one inch aluminum dome tweeter in the center. Now it also has the mid range, which is three and a half inch polypropylene. So this is where my friends, the three way design comes into picture because we have a dedicated driver in the middle that takes care of the mid range frequencies. And the frequency response of the SVS Prime Center is 
48 Hz to 25 kilohertz. SBS Ultra Center. This packs a punch. Well, you can tell why. It has six and a quarter inch main drivers. And guess what they're made of? They're made of composite glass fiber. That is great quality material for a speaker's driver. Like the SVS Prime Center, the SVS Ultra Center also has the one inch aluminum tweeter. And by the way, the mid range in the SVS Ultra Center is four inches, four inches, again, also made of composite glass fiber. So good quality materials all around. And the wow for the six and a half inch drivers is because this really sounds amazing. It can be a little bit expensive. Let's look at all the pros and cons as we move along. So uh, before we go, the frequency response of the SVS Ultra Center is 45 Hertz to 32 kilohertz. All right, friends, now it's time to get into some detailed specifications that will decide what kind of receiver this can be used with and what is the wires you need, the power of your receiver, the impedance and all kinds of specifications that will help fine tune which speaker can be used in your setup and how they can be put to the best use. All right, before we jump into all these detailed specifications, let me tell you what they are. Impedance. So impedance is the resistance to the flow of signal. So a speaker which has a lot of resistance is going to need more power and more voltage from your receiver. And second is the sensitivity. So sensitivity is how loud the speakers can play with a given input voltage. So if you give your speaker a little bit of power and it plays very loudly, that means it is a very highly sensitive speaker. And next is amplifier power. So the impedance sensitivity and various other factors, they dictate what amplifier power is recommended for your speaker. So we will look at that as well. And lastly, the weight, I put that as one of the main specifications that we will look at because mounting and how easily it can be mounted is dictated by the weight as well. All right, for the Yamo S81, the impedance is 8 ohms, the sensitivity is 86 decibels, the amplifier power that's recommended is 60 watts per channel, and the weight of this speaker, it is just 11 pounds. Second is the JBL 520C. This is 6 ohms, so slightly more resistance to power. The sensitivity is 88 decibels. Now this needs a little more amplifier power, the recommended amplifier power is up to 150 watts. The JBL 520C is slightly heavier. It is 16.6 pounds. The SVS Prime Center, 8 ohms impedance. So that is pretty good for a speaker like this. So that means they have probably taken into account the amplifier power that can be used with this. So 8 ohms is appreciated. The sensitivity is 86 decibels. The recommended amplifier power can range from 20 to 200 watts. The weight is 20, just over 20 pounds. So a little bit on the heavier side, but not too bad. And lastly, the SBS Ultra Center, also eight ohms. And the sensitivity is slightly higher compared to the SBS Prime Center. It is 87 decibels. The recommended amplifier power is pretty much in the same range as the SVS Prime Center. It is 20 to 225 watts. Now the weight, that is a problem in some cases. Very, very heavy. Over 30 pounds. It is 31 pounds heavy. All right, now let's jump into the design and construction of each of these speakers. In the design and features comparison, we will look at the following parameters. We'll look at the build quality. We will take a look at how cool this looks because looks are after all important because the center channel is probably going to sit right in the center of your home theater. We'll also look at the grill. I already showed you the grills. The SBS Ultra Center was just not up to the mark. So we won't talk about that a lot in detail, but we will also talk about the ease of installation as a parameter on this slide. First, the build quality for the YAMO. I'm giving this two out of five. All these ratings are based on a scale of one to five, one being the worst or the least, and number five being the best. So Yamo gets two out of five for the build quality because this is a cheap speaker, not well built, and I don't think it would get more than two stars out of five. And we should also consider the material of the drivers, not just the cabinet. The cabinet has a wooden construction. It's not solid wood. The design has some kind of a taper and the taper 
Yamo says adds to the quality of the sound. I don't know about that. One major drawback I saw with the Yamo is these binding posts in the rear. They are not deep enough. You need like a 90 degree little small banana plug so that you can still mount it on the wall using these two wall mount clips. Otherwise, the banana plugs are not gonna let you mount this on the walls. Overall, the build quality just gets two out of five. How does it look? I think it looks pretty decent because uh, it is white color, but you can get any of these speakers painted if you want. But I like the simplicity of the design. I like that it has four legs that you can use to place it on top of a flat surface. The tapered design does give it a little bit of a differentiating factor. Yamo says it adds to the sound quality. I don't believe so. But overall, the looks are pretty decent. The grill. Among all these speakers, the Yamo's grill is the best in my opinion. It is magnetic. You just put it on. The magnets are strong enough. It doesn't just fall off all the time. So I'm impressed by the grill. The grill actually gets five stars. Ease of installation. Among all these speakers, the Yamo was the easiest to install. So there are a few ways to install this. One, it has these wooden legs and the bumpers attached already to the bottom. So you can easily place this on a flat surface such as a table. Very lightweight, so you have that flexibility as well. It also has in the rear a couple of wall mounting pins here that can be used to just mount on a wall using a couple of screws. Although these binding posts in the back are not deep enough if you don't use a right angle little banana plug the binding posts are not going to let you mount it flush to the wall so you have to buy a small banana plug that is 90 degrees so overall very easy to mount and it can also be placed on a table so i'm giving it five stars for ease of installation now let's move on to the jbl 520c the build quality is very decent although i should say that the mica or the veneer that they have attached to it it has very sharp edges i'm not a big fan of that it looks like a box was just cut into different pieces the driver material is also pretty standard nothing to brag about uh, the build quality yeah it is just average so i'm just giving it three out of five how does it look i love the looks of the jbl because of that weaved design as you can see what i'm talking about that weave design is very impressive in my opinion and this is the only one that has a horn tweeter it just looks so different from your normal traditional speakers with a bunch of round drivers so i really appreciate and love the looks of the jbl and it is also very capable that's not just a gimmick it can actually play very good sounds as well so looks yes definitely goes to the jbl 520c the grill, the grill, if you watch my video of the JBL 520, the grill is a very good feature in that speaker. It adds to the character of the weave design. So definitely a five star there as well. Ease of installation, pretty standard, not super, super heavy as well. Only 16.6 pounds and not too big, not too deep. So I think it is pretty easy to install compared to some of these big speakers. So I am giving it four stars for ease of installation. Now moving on to the SBS Prime Center, the build quality. Now this is where the price, as it increases, the build quality increases. Now not so much the looks and other stuff, but the build quality takes a significant leap. The SBS Prime Center, the cabinet is solid. You can tell that this is very solidly built. The components are probably very nice inside too because it's very heavy compared to the size of the speaker. The driver material is also pretty good. So the build quality, I'm giving it four. How does it look? Uh, I'm just gonna call it average because it just looks like a box. Nothing specifically great about it. If you put it in front of your TV or under the TV uh, in a home theater situation, people are not gonna be like, wow, that looks amazing. It, it is good, it's very decent. So giving it three stars. Now the grill is disappointing in the SVS speakers so far, the Ultra Center and the Prime Center. Uh, I showed you the grill and I'm not impressed for the price of $400 or so. I'm not impressed with the grill. It is just decent. I would say two out of five. The ease of installation. Now this is where the depth get a little bit bigger and the speaker size increases, the weight increases, kind of a boxy design. This has sharp corners, sharp edges. So yeah, not super easy to install, especially if you're not putting it on top of a table or something that is solid, you might want to consider the weight. So I'm just giving it three out of five for ease of installation. 
the SBS Ultra Center, the build quality is unquestionably five out of five because solidly built, very heavy because of that reason perhaps. And the material of the drivers, it is composite glass fiber. So very impressed with that as well, which speaks into the sound quality as well, which we will take a look at later. But yeah, solid build quality, great design. Look at that binding pose. They look pretty cool as well. They are not cheap. Overall, SVS Ultra Center is very impressive. Five out of five for build quality. How does it look? I think the piano gloss finish is a dust magnet, like I said in my detailed review of the SVS Ultra Center. But overall, I think that looks very nice. It has some design characteristics here on the sides as well. And there are no sharp edges. On the SVS Prime Center, we had the mica seam under the speaker. I don't see anything like that on the SVS Ultra Center. So very impressed with how it looks. I'm giving it four out of five. The grill, SPS Ultra Center's grill is super cheap and for what, $800 they charge for the speaker, that grill is just garbage. So one out of five. Ease of installation, two out of five because super big speaker, very heavy. You might wanna consider something solid. I'm planning to suspend this on like an arm that is made of metal. I have to go to a hardware store and perhaps find something like I did for the SVS Prime Center. I will be making a video about that too. So please subscribe for all these little tips, tricks and how to mount speakers like this. Now my friends, it's time to give away some awards. So here we go. All right, the ease of installation, the award goes to Yamo S81. As you can see, the medal is assigned to the Yamo's column. And how does it look? So that actually goes to the JBL 520C. So in the second column, you can see that the award went to the JBL 520C and it got two awards actually, the looks and the grill. The grill, like I said, that we've designed, very nice. So the JBL 520C got two medals there. The SVS Prime Center, well, it is kind of a jack of all trades. It neither looks amazing or it does not beat the build quality and sound of the SVS Ultra Center. So it's kind of in the middle, which is why it didn't get many awards, but it is a very nice speaker. So the build quality award, unfortunately, was taken away from the SVS Prime Center by the SVS Ultra Center. So that's where that medal went to. All right, my friends, next we're going to talk about audio performance, which is one of the most important factors, right? After all, all these speakers are meant to produce great sound. So in this, we are going to talk about clarity, how clear the audio is, how clear the dialogues are. So that is very important. So I am going to look at that in detail. I've tested all of them. So we'll look at that aspect of all these speakers. We will look at the punch and impact of all these speakers. Now, when I say punch and impact, it doesn't mean that it just can play loudly. If it plays loudly, according to your needs, it should also be able to do so without distortion. So that is something we will look at as well. And the third parameter that we will look at is wide sound field. What is wide sound field? So I have talked about this in my other videos a lot as well. So in your home theater, if you have a bunch of people sitting wide, the people sitting in the center, maybe one or two people, they are not the only ones who need to hear the best quality sound. Every seat in your home theater should possibly get the best possible audio quality. So if the center channel confines its sound field like a little cone dedicated to just a couple of seats, then the other people are not gonna hear as good of a clear quality sound. So that is where we will look at wide sound field or the off axis response. And finally, I have a parameter here called consistent audio. There are so many times with the YAMO and sometimes with the JBL and even with the SBS Prime Center where I would go in and turn the volume of the receiver up and down. Some scenes are too loud and then in some scenes I can barely hear the dialogues. There is a wind chime here. I should possibly turn that off because the wind has just picked up. I should have put this aside like five minutes back. I apologize. All right, so consistent audio is when you do not have to play with your receiver's volume up and down for different scenes of a movie. If your speaker can produce consistent levels of audio, then that would be a great benefit. So let's look at the YAMO first. 
So the clarity of sound, Yamo has little drivers, the components are not that great, so it only scores two out of five. The punch and impact of this works very hard and it does not play loud sounds or it does not pack that punch. So I'm only giving it one out of five, but don't get me wrong, if it's one, that is because you might want to place this in a smaller home theater so don't discard the Yamo just because it is one it is one compared to all these other speakers so one does not make this useless i still use this sometimes in one of my home theaters so yeah don't throw this away or don't consider a lower end speaker like it's useless it is still capable of giving you good quality sound especially when compared to a sound bar and stuff this is clearly a winner so pretty good even at one star much better than a sound bar next is the width of the sound field and off-axis response this is a two-way design there's no dedicated mid-range driver there's only a tweeter in the center so that goes into the performance in terms of off-axis response so that is why i'm only giving it two stars out of five consistent audio i mean not a great build quality which actually again contributes to the audio levels they're not consistent i have been playing with the remote up and down when i watch a movie three four times i will be changing the volume up and down when using the yamo not a big deal but not ideal as well the jbl 520c on the other hand is slightly better in all these areas the clarity it gets three stars very good quality audio for that price when i bought it it was $120 it was a few years ago now I think I found this on Amazon for $249 or so so you might be able to find it cheaper I don't know but for that price 3 out of 5 is pretty good punch and impact the JBL 520c can actually play very loud that horn tweeter helps a lot for some reason even with smaller drivers compared to some of these other speakers it can somehow pack a punch it 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 actually performs almost as good as the SVS Prime Center when I say almost there are some categories like the off-axis response where it's gonna lack and uh, in terms of the clarity it's gonna lack a little bit but overall it is right up there so very good value for money next the wide sound field or off-axis response of the JBL I'm only giving it three stars and the reason is again it does not have that mid-range dedicated driver so not great sound for everybody in your home theater so that does matter into how it performs consistency in audio levels the JBL is just okay nothing to be proud about so I'm just gonna give it like three stars out of five based on all my experience with that speaker it is still pretty good so three out of five is pretty decent the SBS Prime Center. Now we're getting into better performing audio, right? So clarity, uh, very clear audio, four out of five. It could even actually get five out of five, but sometimes I have trouble in understanding some dialogues. I don't have that problem with the Ultra Center, but with the Prime Center, the same movie, I have some trouble. I don't think the clarity is as top notch as the Ultra Center. I probably gave away my Ultra Center's rating for the clarity, but anyways, punch and impact for the svs prime center now being such a heavy speaker i'm surprised that it only performs as good as the jbl in terms of punch and impact it does take a lot of help from your subwoofer your subwoofer will have to do a lot for all these speakers maybe the ultra center can take up some of that load and help quite a bit but all these other speakers for some reason they don't have that super punchy effect especially the prime center i was surprised but overall three out of five is still pretty good it is very very decent it's just that when compared to the ultra center it lacks quite a bit the off-axis response and wider sound field this prime center is definitely a winner because i could hear sounds in any part of the room pretty clearly and i wouldn't say it was super loud but whatever came out of the speaker for the most part was pretty decent so i'm giving it four out of five for off-axis response consistency in audio i am very disappointed with the consistency in audio of the svs prime center there was a recent movie i was watching with the svs prime center i had to adjust the volume on the remote so many times that i was really disappointed with the svs prime center so i'm only giving it three out of five 
And now the SBS Ultra Center. You probably are looking at all the five stars and wondering what just happened. Well, it just performs too good. It's a little bit pricey, but man, clarity, five stars, punch impact, five stars, sound field width or off axis response, five stars. And lastly, consistency in audio. You can forget about your remote. You don't have to adjust the volume, five stars. I think the slide is over because that was easy. Five stars all around, nothing to worry about in terms of the audio performance for the SVS Ultra Center. Maybe the old saying you get what you pay for might be correct, but you also have to consider that I'm comparing it with these other speakers that are not in the same price range as well. So within this price range of the SVS Ultra Center, then there might be another speaker that's gonna blow this away. But for the time being, this is definitely the winner of this category. The medals are no surprise. You see the medal in the last column, all of them went to the SBS Ultra Center. We should move on to the next slide. All right, now let's look at the pricing because that is a factor, right? If you have a budget of a home theater, you don't wanna just buy the SBS Ultra Center and then you don't have enough fund to buy a good receiver or good speaker wires or good subwoofer. So budget is a concern or a constraint that you should take into account. I wouldn't just buy the best center channel or the best speaker or the best subwoofer or the best anything and not dedicate some of those funds to other components in the home theater. Sense channel is very, very important, but so are things like receivers and subwoofers and stuff like that. So the Yamo, $99, you can find this on Amazon pretty much all the time for 99. I think during Black Friday, it might even go for something less. I actually got the Yamo along with some of the other Yamo speakers. There is a complete set built. I will link that in the description. I paid 149, which included this center channel speaker as well as two fronts, two rears. So that was a good deal. That was five speakers for $149 that included this speaker. And there is a complete build. I will link that, like I said, in the description. And at the end of the video, there will be a playlist. The JBL 520, we already spoke about the pricing. Hard to find on the JBL or the Harman site, but when I bought it, 140 or 120 was really cheap. I bought it on Black Friday. But these days, you might be able to get it for 269 I saw at the time of recording this video on Amazon. The SBS Prime Center, $399. I'm by no way affiliated to SBS. I just happened to buy my first SBS Prime Center on a deal day, I think it was slightly cheaper. And so I went ahead and purchased the SVS Prime Center. I was very impressed. But yeah, if you are able to look for their outlet sales, you might be able to get this for $299 or so. It depends on their sales, like they have President's Day sale, Memorial Day sales and things like that. So look out for those sales and you might be able to grab an outlet one, which is actually pretty good. It might have a little scratch or something somewhere. So. I think that might be a good option. They also have 45 day trial, so you can try that out. And in addition to the SBS Prime Center, I also recommend from Target, if you can find it, it's the Monoprice Monolith THX 365C. I'll put a link to that in the description and a review of that will also be in the playlist that I add at the end. That is also a very good speaker in this price range. That was 449 or so. Just wanted to throw it out there because I thought that sounded very good and maybe a little bit better than the SVS Prime Center for $50 more. And lastly, my friends, the SVS Ultra Center, kind of expensive, the piano gloss as well as the black oak. For some reason, they were both 800. Uh, there used to be a hundred dollar price difference i don't know what happened but anyways i haven't been following this speaker forever but in the reset times i've seen this for eight hundred dollars pretty much on the higher side but you get very good audio quality and decent looks it just looks like a big box pretty heavy but overall very impressive we gave away medals as we went through each of those slides but now my friends it's time to give away some awards what categories are we going to award to these speakers let's take a look we are going to do best design, best budget, best audio, and most value for money. So these are the awards we're going to give to. I would like you to please guess which one would have got the best design and likewise in the other category. But first, let's think for a second which one of these speakers was designed the best. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Here's the reveal. It's the JBL 520C, that amazing weaved design, unique design. That is something different compared to most speakers that we see. 
and that does not impact the sound at all that weird look well it's not weird it just looks cool i think which is why it has those pink cool sunglasses so best design goes to the jbl 520c now the best budget which one of these speakers do you think is the best budget speaker well you might already have the answer but here is the reveal in three two one go the yamo so if you are on a very tight budget but you still want to enjoy the benefits of Dolby Atmos and home theaters with speakers and stuff, this Yamo is not a bad idea at all. I would say that's a great start. And if you buy the bundle that I was talking about on Amazon, you might be able to even give away the speaker to somebody who's starting off new. But yes, best budget speaker for sure, $99 the Yamo. Now to the best audio, the best audio winner is, let's reveal this in three, two, one, go. Of course, it is the SBS Ultra Center because you remember the last column in the audio performance section. All the medals were snagged by the SBS Ultra Center, so the choice was unanimous. I'm hoping you would agree too. If you don't agree with any of this, please tell me in the comment section or tell other visitors which one you prefer or which one you think is the winner because that's how we're going to learn and talk to each other and figure out what's best in certain scenario all right my friends the best value for money so this is where we look at how much we paid what we are getting what is the sound quality and everything into consideration in terms of how much value we get from the money we pay so in three two one it is the sbs prime center so the sbs prime center in that mid price range of 399 or if you get it from the outlet for 300 dollars that is great value for money all right, my friends, now it's time to award the biggest award of the night, which is the best overall center channel speaker. So the nominees, as you know, were the Yamo, the JBL, the Prime Center and the Ultra Center. So let's reveal the best overall center channel speaker in three, two, one, go. Obviously, it is the SBS Ultra Center. I cannot be too excited because I'm outdoors and my neighbors are probably wondering what I'm doing with all these speakers. But my friends, that is the most excitement I can show outdoors at this time. I'm very pleased with the SBS Ultra Center's performance. Once again, reminding you, this is not a sponsored video. I have nothing to do with any of these companies. If you buy or not buy any of these, it doesn't matter to me. I am just basing off this on my experience with all these speakers. This was a center channel comparison from all budgets, from $100 all the way to $800. And I hope this comparison gave you an insight into not just these speakers, but when you think of buying center channel speakers, this review or this video should have given you something to think about in terms of the specifications, build quality, what you need to look for when you compare sounds and audio quality. If nothing else, I hope you take into account all the parameters that we looked at today in your quest and your search for the perfect center channel speaker for your home theater. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Namaste.